developing digital task manager apps using Todoist Pro for business and teams. So let me show you now how I use a digital task manager with my analog planners, full focus planner or productivity planner in a hybrid system. So what I've loaded up here, if you can see this, Catherine, is my full focus planner template. And if you're doing this course, you get both the full focus planner and a hybrid of the productivity planner and 411 templates free. Otherwise, you can purchase them for $10 each. And I'm going to show you here how I do this. So basically, what I've created is just a place that's exactly the same as the full focus planner. So you have a place for your annual goals. So you will list your annual goals and your quarter. And I've got an example here of one of my goals from last year, quarter uh, goal number three for quarter one, which was my business productivity goal, which was to start using the hybrid system, the full focus planner. That was part of it. The 40X system, which is uh, similar to the one thing where you pick your one goal, widely important goal for the year, and you set up a uh, accountability system for that and you track your lead measures. Also, I went back to Todoist. I moved from, I used to be Todoist, then I went to TickTick and I went back to Todoist because they now have boards and I love boards in the digital system. I use those a lot. We did some business made simple university uh, learning as well. So this is all under what I would call personal development, life planning goals, etc. So again, you start with your annual goals. Then I broke them down into quarterly goals. So the idea here is you will move up to three of them from your annual goals to your quarterly goals. Then we have our weekly big three, again, the same thing. So you've got a spot here for your number one task, your number two task, and your three tasks. So you can just transfer that straight from your full focus planner or your productivity plan if you're using that. And then the same basic premise for your daily um, pages. So number one, number two, number three. So what your uh, priority tasks are for the day, you can just plug them in there. I don't do it every day. I really only use this for my goals and my big projects. So if it's an annual goal, quarterly goal, monthly goal, then I'll break it down because I want to time track it. And Todoist has time tracking integration with the Pomo Done app, which enables me to track every half an hour or 50 minute increment that I'm working on that. And I have a report of that and it's really useful for, for building client work. The advantage of this, the digital system, is sometimes you're on a hike or something like that and you've got an idea and you've got your phone with you and you can just go in and put it in, bang, 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 and it's there. So that's how I do it with uh, the full focus planner. I use this template. And of course, you can create it yourself, but I've already created that format for you. Now, for the one thing or the productivity planner, the way I do that, again, is the same basic thing. Uh, I take my annual goals and I list them under annual goals. And you can list professionals, so I have them there. Then they recommend a monthly system. Now, I prefer quarterly, but you can set monthly goals. And again, what you want to do there is figure out, okay, what do I need to do every month to accomplish this and this and this and this and this? And you try and figure out five things you could do that are going to support those five annual goals. So here I have my weekly goals, course content related, what we're doing on social, my client work, this is particularly with bridges and financial stuff, and my one thing habit, which is writing content. Then I have some other stuff here that I list for other tasks. And what this is usually is something else that was there before, which I didn't do, or I've just carried it over for some reason, because I'm still doing some work on it. And I want to still time track it. Now you can also do this in a spreadsheet. There is a simple XLS that you can do. And it's the same thing here. You can see I've got my annual goals, monthly goals, and then I flip it over to my daily goals. And so I will usually start in this spreadsheet and I have a Google, a Google spreadsheet, not an XLS. And uh, I will go here and then I just copy and paste this into Todoist so I can track how much time I'm spending. And you can see there are some ticks here. So I've got some things done. And what I'll usually do is keep this right here and sometimes on that big whiteboard. So when I pray in the morning, I can look at it or I can just pick it up here and I can see what I'm doing. And this reminds me what I'm supposed to be focusing on using other task and project managers. Now, there are other task manager options such as ClickUp. And I have experimented with ClickUp a little bit, as you know. And what I like about ClickUp is that it's fully functional a project manager that allows you to work in teams, obviously, but it also has the ability to track milestones. 
So I can go and go, okay, what's my income goal? I can say, okay, I'm at this percentage or my savings goal for the year. And I can say I'm at 50 or 60% and I can have that little bar there. So I do like that. And again, it has a lot more advanced features. So if you need that, like Gantt charts, uh, milestones, being able to see uh, interdependencies between different tasks. And if you're working with a team of multiple people on multiple projects, and you probably absolutely want to step up to something like ClickUp or Asana. I have tried Asana a little bit. It's good. It is a little bit pricey if you're a small operation uh, to use. And the free version doesn't really give you a whole lot more than to do, to be honest with you. So I think uh, for project management, if you need something more robust, then uh, take a look at ClickUp. These guys are just killing it. They are adding features every single week. You've got all kinds of integrations, zaps you can do uh, with other tools. So you can automatically sync with Slack, for example. Uh, you can go your email. They're trying to develop something that will replace email and Slack and in a project management setting that you could do everything. Again, uh, I know some people have a lot of projects and a lot of moving pieces they need to manage and you're gonna need something more robust than just to do is to accomplish that. Of course, you can create this yourself in any task manager. So if you use Asana or uh, another tool like Mondays or something like that, Rike, mm -hmm. you can essentially go ahead and recreate something that's modeled on your paper planner. And what a lot of people will do is they'll plan everything in their paper planner and they'll use their digital planner as a catch-all. What digital does is it offloads a lot of that stuff into a place that you can check every week as part of your weekly preview. You should look through that and go, okay, what are all these miscellaneous things and how many of them are important? Questions on how to use a digital task manager as part of a hybrid system. Do you usually input everything from your paper planner into the digital system after? Do you do it like every week, every month? Um, what's, or do you just do it when you feel like you need to organize? Yeah, I usually do it as part of my weekly preview process. Mm -hmm. So I'll take that big three for the week mm -hmm. or five or whatever it is, uh, and I'll go in and I'll put it there at the front of the week mm -hmm. because that's my priorities. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, something else comes up, as I say, I've got one of those emails from somebody, and then I can go ahead and put that in. But I want to see where it goes. So there was a, a meeting uh, because our client was going to the East Coast that wasn't there on Monday. And I don't think I even put it in there uh, because essentially we usually do a Friday call. But when I came time for that meeting, I just connected it to this task, which is number three every week. And that's what's tracking my time. So it was in my planner, my paper planner for that day. I didn't go in and, and do another task for it. I didn't, didn't have to. If you don't estimate the time, you will shortchange yourself because we always overestimate what we can do uh, in a short period of time or a day. Yeah. But we tend to underestimate what we can accomplish in the long term. And it's just doing those little things every day, every week, that incremental progress that adds up and means the achievement of the goals, like I showed you earlier. Uh, again, it wasn't when I planned it. Obviously, we had COVID. I had to totally rethink and redo some things and add some things that weren't part of the original goal. But that's life.